Hello, and welcome to Worship Today. I'm Pastor Janet Miller, and we are very excited that you took the time to worship with us. Our song is Gather Us In. We begin each time of worship with the time of confession to our God and forgiveness for our sins. And so, as people who understand that God listens when we call and when we confess, and that He Himself forgives us all our sins, we call to our God. Gracious God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Well, people of God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. So as a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our song is, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name
We will have two scripture readings for today. The first comes from the Old Testament book of Exodus, the 16th chapter, where we read, When they journeyed from Elam, the entire company of the Israelites came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month after the exodus from the land of Egypt, the entire company of the Israelites murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the pots of meat, when we ate bread to the full, and for you, uh, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then Moses said, or the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain down from heaven for you and the people will go out and gather the amount for each day so that I may test them. Will they walk in my law or not? On the sixth day, they will prepare what they bring in and it will be made twice as much as they gather every other day. Moses and Aaron said this to all of the Israelites and in the evening, you will know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your murmurings against the Lord. As for us, what are we that you should murmur against us? Moses said, you will know this when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and bread in the morning to satisfy you because the Lord has heard your murmurings that you are murmuring against him. As for us, what are we? that you should murmur against us, but against, not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, tell the whole community of the Israelites, come before the Lord because he has heard your murmurings. As Aaron spoke to the whole community of the Israelites and they looked toward the wilderness, there the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud and the Lord spoke to Moses. I have heard the murmurings of the Israelites. Tell them that during the evening you will eat meat. And in the morning, you will be satisfied with bread so that you may know that I am the Lord, your God. In that evening, the quail came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, a layer of dew was all around the camp. And when the layer of dew had evaporated, there was on the surface of the wilderness, a thin flaky substance, thin like the frost of the earth. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? Because they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you for food. Here ends our first reading. Then our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 16. That's a lot of reading between the two of them. But here we are in the 20th chapter. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning and hired workers in the vineyard. And after agreeing with the workers for the standard wage, he sent them into his vineyard. And when it was about nine o'clock in the morning, he went out again and saw others standing in the marketplace without work. Then he said to them, you go into the vineyard too, and I will give you whatever is right. And so they went. And when he went out again about noon and three o'clock in the afternoon, he did the exact same thing. And then at five o'clock that afternoon, he went out and found others standing around and said to them, why are you standing here all day without work? And they said, because no one hired us. And he said to them, you go and work in my vineyard too. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to him, said to his managers, call the wage workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last hired until the first. When those hired at five o'clock came, each received a full day's pay. 
And when the hired came, those hired first came, they thought they would receive even more. But each one also received the standard wage of a day's pay. When they received it, they began to pl complain against themselves or among themselves against the landowner, saying, these last fellows worked one hour and you have made them equal to us who uh, bore the hard work and burning heat all of the day. And the landowner replied to one of them, friend, I am not treating you unfairly. Didn't you agree to work for me for the standard wage? Take what is yours and go. I want to give to this last man the same as I give you. I, am I not permitted to do what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Loving Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. So I had to share with you a story that I heard this week. It was a story that was told um, in something called a sermon for every Sunday, which was a podcast that I was listening to. And in the story, they talked about a monk who lived in this really, really strict monk community. And in this community, they were required to keep silent all the time. It was a silent monk community. So he joined this community. Excuse me. He joined this community and after about 10 years of belonging to the community, the senior monk called him into his office and he said, because you have done your job for 10 years, I will allow you to say two words. The monk thought for half a second and he said, food bad. They were kind of strange two words to say, but they were his two words and he stood by them. And so he went back into the community and he went back to serving an absolute silent community of monks. Well, years went by and pretty soon he was up to another 10 years of total silence when he was brought in to the senior monk's office again. And the senior monk said, you have served very faithfully and well for 10 more years. And so I will allow you two more words. The other monk thought for half a second. Then he looked at the head monk and he said, bed hard. Hmm. Not the most inspiring words you've ever heard, but those were the words he chose to say. And so he went back into the community and was part of being a silent monk again. Well, when finally 10 more years had gone by, this is 30 years, 10, 20, 30, that he had lived in total silence, the monk called him, the older monk again, called him back into his office and gave him, said, because you have served for 10 more years, I will give you two more words that you can say. And the younger monk looked at him and said, I quit. The senior monk looked at him and in total exasperation and said, well, I'm not surprised. You've done nothing but complain since you got here. But um, bump, right? That's one of those things that if you were a, uh, person who was uh, uh, on late night TV, they'd give you a rim, sh rim shot when you say one of those stories that have an odd ending story like that. Uh, complaining, complaining whether it is in two words every 10 years or the way most of us complain constant is a theme for our lessons in our scriptures this week. We begin we begin the scriptures with the Old Testament lesson of the people of God. You remember where they're at right here? The people of God, the Israelites, have been slaves in Egypt, and they've been in Egypt for 450 years, and they have called out to their God, and their God has heard their call, and he sent Moses in to, to tell the Pharaoh to let them go, 
The Pharaoh didn't want to let them go right away. And so they watched the plagues happen and they watched finally Pharaoh relents and lets them go and then chases them out of Egypt. And they saw their God go ahead of them in a burning fire as the sea split open and they walked through the sea in safety and it closed up over the heads of their enemies. Whew. That's quite a testimony and story to, about your God, right? You'd think it'd be one that you would remember forever if you had experienced it. And yet, and yet, they are, what was the reading? Not much more than a couple weeks into their journey, maybe two weeks after this had happened, and they begin to shout at Moses and Aaron and in their way also to complain at God. We are going to starve out here. We're going to be dying of thirst. Why didn't you bring me up with something to take care of these needs? What were you thinking? Why did you just bring us out here to starve? We could have been eating there even though we were slaves. And it goes on and on and on and on and they complain. Now Moses and Aaron obviously don't like being complained at. And they think that this is ridiculous because they remember what God has just done for these people. But yet, they are stuck with the complaining, angry people. And so they go to God with the problem. And God, who hears the whine of his people, and especially the questions of Moses and Aaron, comes up with a plan a miracle to help them, like they haven't had enough of their own share of miracles by now. But they get a daily miracle. In this they get that in the evening the quail will come in and you can catch them and you can kill them and you can have all the quail you want to eat that day. And in the morning there will be dew which will leave behind this film that can be made into bread, this film of bread, we call it manna. But I think that's so funny to have it a name because manna is just from their Hebrew language. It just means, what is it? So when the people walked out and saw it on the ground, they went, manna? What is it? And for some reason, that word stuck. And so they forever, it has been called manna. Anyway, this is what God sends. And at first, it's got to have been an amazing miracle. After all, we've got something to eat. We're not starving. Quail was a delicacy. It was awesome. Oof, do you hear that lightning going on? Lightning and thunder out there um, going on. I apologize. I hope our electricity does not go off. But if it does, we'll figure out something else to do. Anyway, um, God, God sends us and the people are excited for about a minute and a half until they realize that this is what God is sending every single day. Not only is he sending it every day, but he says, you can't keep enough over. You have to go out and re-get it every single day. If they keep more for the next day behind, it will just go bad. That's just how it works because they're supposed to remember to depend on God every single day. They're supposed to be learning this habit. And so they do. But can you imagine, you know, at first, as I said, it was exciting. It was wonderful. But can you imagine being served the same food, even if it was free food, even if it was a miracle food, the same food for 40 years every day, every day? Manna would not have turned into a word that was excitement after not very long. Over a thousand meals later, people were pretty ready to give up quail and bread from heaven and find something else to eat. <sighs> this idea that we are never quite ready, we are never quite okay, that we will never quite understand God's way and God's mercy and and it's never quite right for us. It's, it's so, so something that we should all as human beings understand and see, not just to judge the people of Israel about, but see in ourselves too. 
our gospel lesson for today kind of touches once more on our ability to take what God does and find in it something to complain about again. It's the story of the laborers and the owner of the vineyard. And as I read, the vineyard had a or owner of the vineyard went and he hired day laborers and he hired some at the beginning of the day and he hired some in the next hour and the next few hours and the next few hours and he hired the last group at almost the end of the day. And of course, if you were like me and most of us, the people who were hired at the beginning of the day expected that they would be paid more than the people who were hired at the end. But this story isn't a story about you and me and a regular boss. This story is to help us understand God's love and mercy for his people, this parable is. And so in this story, things don't go the way we would expect them. No. As a matter of fact, the landowner pays the people who worked for only an hour the same amount as he paid the people who worked for the whole time in the heat and the sun. And there is complaining, even though he paid them all exactly what he promised them. Because it doesn't seem fair. I mean, I gotta say, ooh, listen that, to that thunder roll. I gotta say, I understand the complainers in this situation. Isn't God supposed to be fair? Come on, isn't that what we're taught? That fairness is good? But, but fairness is not what God promises. The promise that comes from God is so much better and more than fairness. Because after all, fairness is you get what you deserve, right? And there are some times that we think, oh, you know, I'm a good person. I have worked hard for the church. I've believed in Jesus Christ. I've tried to keep, keep all the commandments. I've, 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 and I deserve some good. It is a natural inclination to think or want. If life were fair, good people would get good things. However, that's rarely rarely how we see the world around us working because we blessedly don't all get what we deserve not what we think we deserve but what we really deserve yeah there is a famous author who said if we all got what we truly deserved the whole world would be blind deaf and dumb meaning that god would strike us all because none of us are perfect people no matter how much we'd like to think of ourselves as good, none of us are sinless or that good. But yet, here is the good news in the story. God loves us anyway. He doesn't just love us anyway. He loves us in an extraordinary way, in a way beyond anything we can imagine or even understand. We do not get what we deserve. We do not get what is fair. We get so much more. We get a God who loves us, sins and all, who knows us, warts and all, and who wants us, every single one of us. A God whose love does not end when we screw up, when we turn from him when we have questions, when we don't follow the directions that we have so clearly been given. No, a God that welcomes us back, who says in love, I will forgive you. As a matter of fact, I love you so much. I will give you that which is most precious to me, my son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you. There's nothing fair about that. But that's our God for you. 
loving beyond compare, loving beyond fairness, loving beyond anything we or anyone around us deserves. And it's our job to make sure we remember it. It's our job to look around and see it for the gift that it is instead of joining the grumbling crowd. To know and to love our God who loves us so unconditionally and to spread that love and tell his story to everyone around him and us. In Jesus' name, amen. song is Messiah. Someone shouting from the desert, someone shouting from the sea, someone shouting from the mountains, someone shouting from the with you and also with you on this day we pass the peace of Christ to you knowing nothing can stop his love from reaching out to you and to everyone peace be with you amen we also remember that in every way we are children of God and we owe everything to him and because everything we have is our God's we remember that we are asked to give back to him in tithes and offerings. If you would like to be a part of giving back to God in a way that helps this program to keep going on Facebook and on YouTube and in other places, this programming of worship, you may do so by sending offerings in to one of two places. I serve of the two. The first is Hope Lutheran Church, at P.O. Box 886 in Summit, South Dakota, 57266. And we also have a Venmo, which I will hopefully remember to put above us so that you can see the QR code and push stop if you need to and use it to be able to send a Venmo uh, for the congregation. And we also had automatic withdrawal opportunities if you would like to contact us for them. The second place that I serve is at Florence. So the, um, my two congregations, Good Hue and New Helgen. You may send to them by sending to New Helgen Lutheran Church at P.O. Box 5 in Florence, South Dakota, 57235. And again, they also have automatic withdrawal opportunities. We continue with our prayers for the people of God. God, who is gracious and merciful, teach your church to invite and welcome all. Lead us to be grateful for the blessings of community. Challenge your church to choose equity and compassion 
over judgment. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God who sends the wind and the sun, you know every worm and bush by name. Help us remember that even humblest parts of creation are precious to you. Show us how best to care for the earth and its creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who is ready to relent from punishment, impart your compassion wisdom to legislators, judges, members of the military, and law enforcement. Give them courage to serve their com committees and communities in the times of uncertainty, stress, or exhaustion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who saves, direct your people who are tempted by evil ways. Protect your children from calamity and disaster. Strengthen all who are in trouble. Encourage all who despair or are in pain of any kind. We especially lift up to you from our communities and our hearts. Joe, Susie, Deb, Addison, Chris, Charlotte, Kelly, Ramsey, Kathy, Brian, Barry, Sharky, Mary, Charlie, and all who call on your name now. Merciful God, receive your prayer. God who is slow to anger, may we boast about the goodness of Jesus with the confidence of Paul. Inspire us to find abundance in whatever vocation we are called to in the world and in service to your congregation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray especially for those who have suffered from natural, natural disasters, especially we lift up the people of Morocco and the people of Libya, the people who live on Maui, and all those who are working with them to help after the fires, the people who have been hit by hurricanes or who are readying themselves for others to come. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our hearts, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and be gracious to you. May the Lord know you and remember you and give you his grace. Amen. Our song is Father, I Adore You. Before we go, 
just a reminder. I've gotten not so good about doing this as time has gone on. But if you have found that this worship is something that you've enjoyed, that you would like to share with others, or you would like to just be part of getting the Word of God and the story of God out into the world more, you can do something to help. You can either share the worship onto your own page. You can uh, do a like or a heart or something like that in the emojis. Or you can comment uh, below the worship and tell us things like what your prayer concerns are, how you felt about the worship, uh, where you are watching us from, things like that. Any of those things would help in uh, the, it's called the algorithm which brings the worship up then so more people see it on facebook and on youtube and in the other places that it is put and so if you want to be part of that feel free to do that and now as i remind you every week before we go be safe be smart and be kind to each other because the world needs kindness most of all and go in peace and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We will see you next week. By the way, we're thanking God for rain that comes. Even if it comes at the end of the season, rain is good. And so we're glad that it is here and I can hear it on the roof. See you next week.